Did you know that you can use native third-party libraries right in your NativeScript projects? I'll show you an example of how to use that in iOS coming up in this video. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Alex from nativescripting.com. Welcome back to another video tutorial. If you like this channel, consider subscribing to get all the native script tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here. I do most of them, but sometimes I have guests join in. Check out some of the videos that Shiva Prasad has sent me all the way from New Zealand there in this channel as well. And if you want to get more native script related training, specifically advanced and intermediate courses, check out the link below to nativescripting.com. There's also a discount code there. So as of NativeScript version 5.2, which was a couple of versions ago, you can take your iOS libraries and drop them right into your projects and then code against them. It's that simple. We're going to look at something similar to that today, where we're going to reference a native library for iOS using CocoaPods. And you'll see how easy it is to code against the APIs in JavaScript. So this should get you started using native libraries directly in your NativeScript projects without having to import a plugin or wait for somebody else to implement a plugin if it's not already available. Are you ready? Let's do it. By the way, do you like my iScript native shirt? Let me know down in the comments below. I had this thing specially designed. I think it's a pretty cool logo. I'm going to give away a shirt just like this for those of you that are sharing this video with the iScript native tag on Twitter or Facebook. I'm going to pick one random person to win this shirt and I'll announce it in the videos to come. So subscribe to this channel so you know if you want or not. All right, let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is create a new project. So TNS create demo native lib. Okay. And of course, this can be Angular, Vue, plain TypeScript, or JavaScript. I'm going to go for JavaScript this time. I haven't done one of those in a while. I usually go for TypeScript, but let's go for plain JavaScript. Let's go with the Hello World template. And my project is created. I'm going to go into that folder and open this up in Visual Studio Code. All right. So here's my project. This is a Hello World application. So it's just going to be that clicky button. So in order to get a native library in here, first I have to find what library I want to use. And in this case, I'm just going to do iOS. So open up your app folder and then app resources. You have this iOS folder. In here, I'm going to reference a pod, a CocoaPod. CocoaPod is how iOS open source libraries are distributed usually. And here is CocoaPods.org. I'm going to go back to the root of the site here. There's a ton of open source libraries here for iOS. And the one I happen to find is this SD web image. It's one of the most popular packages out there. It's an objective C library. It's constantly being updated and it allows you to display web images, different formats, PNGs, JPEGs, SVGs, WebP, animated GIFs. Here's a list of some of them. This is well documented and well maintained and it also does caching for you. So it's a pretty cool library and we're going to use this to show an image. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is go ahead back here and run in this project TNS run iOS. So while that's kicking up, I'm going to go back here and let's make some changes here. So I'm going to go into my XML and let's just take everything out of here except for the page. And I'm going to remove the class page and navigating to and just leave the page there. All right. So I'm going to put an image here with the source. Let's find an image on the web that I can just display here and I have just the right one. So let's take a look at it. We have a placeholder.com image. This just gives you placeholder images that you can use. So I'm going to take this right here, copy it, and let's add that as the source of the image. And now my app has already spun up. So all it did was update that image. And here's our page with that placeholder image in place. So this is a native script image module right here. This is a native script image widget. And on iOS, it happens to wrap the UI image view. Now this library that we're looking at, this SD web image, it actually provides some helpers for the UI image view. It gives the UI image view more functionality that does the caching, it can display different kinds of images. So, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, before I do that, I just want to pick out some kind of animated GIF that we want to display. And I'm going to go to Giphy.com and I'm already confused. There's just so much stuff here going on here. Reactions. How about this one right here? Excited. And there's this teddy bear right here. So there's this copy link and this gives you the actual link to that GIF right here. If I copy that and look at it separately, you'll see that 
you get the animated image here. Great. So um, if I go back to my code and put that as the source of my image, let's see what's going to happen here in iOS. Okay, you get the image. That's fine. But you only get one frame of it. It's not animated. That's not what we want. We want to get the animated image. And we're going to use that SD image library to help us out. So I'm going to get the placeholder back here. And in order to get this SD web image installed, we're going to use a pod file to indicate what version we want to install. So I'm going to go down here and look at getting started. There's some code there for us. Ah, here's the pod file installation. So I need to create a pod file and I need to use this line to indicate what version of SD web image to use. Let's go back here in my iOS folder. I'm going to create a new file called pod file and I'm going to paste that line of code in there. This will tell native script to go and download in this SD web image and build it along with the project. I'm going to go and terminate my process here and save this and I'm going to run the project one more time. This will rebuild it and it'll see that there's a pod file in there. It'll download all the pods, all the cocoa pods that I've listed. I only have one in there so far. So that didn't work. Let me remove the platforms here and just rebuild again. I'm going to run TNS build iOS. Okay. And that seems to have worked. So uh, when in doubt, remove the platforms folder. It says here, downloading dependencies, installing SD web image, and that's the right version, generating pod project. And you can see that Xcode is building everything. Great. So TNS run iOS. Now that everything is built successfully, I'm going to run it. In the meantime, let's take a look at what's happened here. If you go to platforms, this is the built output. You can see there's a new folder here called pods and there's SD web image right there. There's the header file and there's the code. That's the objective C code. We don't need to worry about that, thankfully. So now our library is installed. We now can use SD web image in our project. So let's go back to SD web image documentation for a second and see how we can use it, how to use. So here is the objective C code that we would need to write. Now we're going to write JavaScript, of course, not objective C, but I'm going to copy this just so we have a reference point. And let's go back here. When this image loads, I want to do some stuff with it. So I'm going to indicate a loaded handler here. I'm going to call it on image loaded. And let's go to the code behind for the page. I'm going to delete all this stuff. I'm going to create a function called on image loaded and then add it to my exports. Now this was TypeScript. You just say export function on image loaded. Now our args is actually of type event data if you're using TypeScript and args dot object is actually the image itself. So if you're using TypeScript, it would be, you would cast it as image like that, okay? But we are not casting since we're using just JavaScript. So I'm just gonna say const image equals args dot object. And now we need to get the image view, the UI image view, which is the iOS view that lives under the image. So const image view equals image dot iOS. If this was TypeScript, you'd probably wanna cast this as UI image view. Okay. So now that we have the image view, now we can use that code that we've copied from SD web image. I'm just going to paste this in here. This is not going to work, of course, because it's objective C. We need to essentially translate this to JavaScript. So how do we translate that to JavaScript? Well, we have our image view right here. Actually, I'm going to rename this to image view, the full word so that it matches this. So I need to call image view dot SD set image with URL. So I'm going to copy and paste that right here. And now I need to instead instantiate a URL object. So that would be nsurl dot URL with string. So I'm going to copy that, call that function. It's a static function on nsurl and pass in the URL of the image we want as a string. And that URL is right here. That's this Giphy URL. So I'm going to paste that in and that's it. I'm going to save everything and this should update automatically. And there we go. We now have a dancing bear that looks pretty happy. So this is an animated GIF playing in iOS thanks to our new friend SD web image. Now this library has a ton of other features. You can check it out. There's probably an Android equivalent of this as well. But if you really need to get animated GIFs playing, you can just go to market.nativescript.org and in the plugins search for animated gif or rather gif right there so this right here will play animated gifs i believe you have to check the documentation here yeah there you go if you like this video consider subscribing so you get more of these tips tricks and tutorials about native script but make sure to ring the little bell button so that you get those notifications about the new videos that are coming out you can also find me on twitter i'm at digitalix over there and i'll see you in the next video bye